Um, I recognize it's Saturday. And I recognize what that means to you because this is a day when ordinarily you would not be here. So I would like to make clear from the beginning that I have no intention of speaking for four and a half hours. I think that actually this way of working together, it's very important that we recognize certain principles that are going to be valid throughout our entire teaching career, whoever we are dealing with, including adults, that at the same time you have prepared through your own experience in classrooms and by reading this rather interesting book, which in a very broad way states quite a bit that we need to bring to a more clear focus in our talk. So what I would suggest is that I Present principles, ideas. If you already know them, that's the most important moment, just like with your children, to hang in and say, I'm going to look at this now from another point of view. It's like the astral body. If I ask you to write down uh, everybody your own definition of the astral body, it's very interesting that we would have everyone a different one. And they'd all be legitimate, and you could all point to Steiner and say, in here he says this, and in here he says this. And over here, it's the villain of the piece. It's the one that comes in and just takes over the etheric structure that I have. And otherwise, we can't be ourselves without it. It's a very complicated sort of thing. So I know that you've worked with the book. I begin by saying one of the most important principles that we can deal with as teachers is to know this and try for our lives as teachers to understand what it means. That really is what all of our work is, especially these development days. We can lay aside all the issues with the board and this particular child and that particular child and work to the fundamentals that keep us um, involved in this process. One thing you, you, to come back to time and time and time again. Human being. A human being is a spiritual being. We can talk about Michael if you want, but we're not here to talk about Michael. We're here to say to ourselves, that's very abstract. I either was born knowing that, and I feel very good with that statement, or one can say, well, I'm not entirely sure what we mean by all of this. However one approaches it, one must come to terms with that statement. It's not that a human being, our times look upon this as either nonsense, the start, or explains it this way, that we're human beings who are trying to lead moral lives on earth so that we become uh, spiritual. It's the exact opposite, as is so often the case. We actually are already spiritual beings. And we're trying to become very good, whole, moral human beings so that our spiritual qualities will be enhanced and advanced. It's the opposite. And we educate the way we do because of that. When we talk about the four sheaths today, we will always be aware that in front of us, with this child also, there is a wholeness. There is a wholeness, and our job is simply to assure as much as we can that A, we see that child for who he is, this part, not ignoring that part at all, but see always this aspect. And when we can't see it, don't blame the child for, oh, you're the only one in the class without a spiritual being. That's <laughs> not going to happen. No, it just means, ah, you're the one who shows me my own particular blindness, and uh, uh, thank you. Actually, it'll be easier to thank you 10 years from now as an anecdote than it is now. But nonetheless, 
you know, the closer we can get to that moment, the better for us. We have this. And our job is to provide opportunities for this spiritual being to take up, let's just call her always a her, and the teachers will be a he. That way we'll just end this whole dispute about pronouns. That she is incarnating because there's a purpose. She has a reason for being here. We all have a reason for being here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have incarnated yet. The times are such that children are coming and they're very clear sometimes about why they're here. I assure you 35 years ago this really was not the case. It was, it was different. But children are coming and it's as if, oh, finally now I can get on with my work here. And it's very nice. But we have to be a step ahead of them. If you uh, in, in this, this uh, of course here, for instance, if you only take out the ideas that I bring and some of the ideas that Rudolf Steiner brings, and mine are just a condensation of those, and have none of your own, then you need to ask yourself, what did I gain from this? What did I gain? Either ideas for what I can do in the classroom, which might be nothing more than let a space be there. But one has to engage in this work. And engaging in this work is not grabbing it. Engaging in this work is creating places where things can happen. They're called classrooms. And there's any number of, of very good sources for finding out what a classroom should be. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 12. And you walk into a school, and sometimes it's there, and sometimes it's not. These are things that all can be worked with. But one needs to know that behind all of this, behind all of this, is this principle. The human being is this, trying to become that. That's what we recognize. We cannot, therefore, accuse children ever of anything. They're working through stuff. And the fact that the last seven or eight years of my teaching was to do with educational support, the fact that you have a profession, educational support, tells us that there is a lot more of an activity here unable, for whatever reason, to take up this. That's all it is. We cannot really any longer say she can't learn. That's, that, that, I mean, people could say that about my generation and get away with it because we didn't know any better. But you can't say that anymore. All we can say is, ah, oh, she comes and she brings this and <laughs> she seems to have a lot of difficulty with sitting there longer than, let's say, 15 minutes. We used to call that sanguine. Then for a while we called it pathologically sanguine. Now we call it, whoa, whatever uh, a term we have from some source here, there, everywhere, sitting on her leg, all of this sort of thing. Once we recognize all that, that's information. Then we work through it. How do we enable this to happen? Luckily, there's a rhythm to it. So this is number one. We must always have this in mind. It's a principle. There's going to be three that we want to work with. Since I mentioned it, one of the essential aspects that we have in our quiver, so to speak, is the fact that this spiritual being is amenable, an aspect of rhythm. <laughs>